talk about an incident that happened um, this Saturday evening about 7 o'clock. And it just, I think it emphasizes just how dangerous domestic situations are uh, and how deadly they can be. Um, unfortunately, our state's one of those that almost leads the nation every year in um, domestic assaults and domestic deaths. Uh, around 7 o'clock, we got a call an apartment complex, the 4900 block of Hard Scrabble Road, that shots are fired and that a woman was screaming for help. Three of our deputies responded uh, very quickly. Um, they went up the stairs to where the apartment was. They saw a door that had been kicked open and they could hear a woman screaming inside. They entered that apartment and as soon as they entered, they were able to see a female that was sitting on the ground. She had been assaulted. I observed the male subject that was in there. Uh, that was armed. Um, he ran through the apartment to the balcony, at which time a shot was fired. One of our deputies shot back twice. Our deputy did not hit him. Uh, the, the suspect had shot himself in the head and committed suicide. He was there to kill the female. Um, he had put that in writing. He would expressed that, and there was no doubt that's what his intent was. And by our deputies responding as quick as they did and the actions they took, that saved her life. He had fired um, numerous shots while he was in the apartment before our deputies got there that actually entered the apartment directly across the hallway. Uh, there was a young lady that was th in that apartment. Uh, she was not injured. Um, she has a Bible verse printed on the side of her wall, and she pointed that out to me and said, that Bible verse saved me, and I asked her, how did that happen? And she pointed to the kitchen and said, see my juicer? I was about to make me something to drink and something told me to go get on my computer, so I left the kitchen and walked into the bedroom. And we stood there, and that's where the bullets came from the apartment across the hallway would have, would have struck her. Um, so by the grace of God, she wasn't injured. Um, I don't talk about suicides. We don't identify suicide um, individuals, so I'm not gonna do that today. Um, the lady that was assaulted, that was the victim, we're, we're taking care of her and getting her the, the help that she's got. Um, but this was a suicide that happened on um, Saturday night. Questions? Sir, why do you think our state particularly is so high with going into domestic violence? Why do you think our state particularly is? <laughs> um, I, I don't know. I, I, again, I think it's um, a lot's got to do with education and home. And when a, when a young person sees abuse in the home and that starts that cycle, um, I don't know if it's males think they possess a female and that they can control them and if I can't have you, nobody will. You know, um, we work very closely with Sister Care. That's one of the main agencies that we help domestic violence victims to, to get involved with. They provide a place for them to stay. They provide counseling. We do that also. We have investigators that are trained in working these type cases. Um, we try to get involved uh, as quick as we know about them and, and, and get help. Uh, but sometimes it goes from zero to 100 very quickly. Um, and, and that's kind of what happened on Saturday night. Um, I'm going to have to applaud our deputies that were there. The actions they took are quick. Um, the individual did not die on the scene. He died later in the hospital. And here's someone who had threatened them, and they worked so hard to try to save that man's life. Um, just the things that they did that trying to, trying to stop the bleeding and try to save him, they, they really worked hard. Um, and unfortunately, he, he didn't make it, but they really put some effort in it. And we don't talk about that a whole lot. I think sometimes that's neglected is that, you know, here you are with someone who's, trying to kill someone, someone who's really threatened you with a gun also, and then you're doing all you can to save his life. You're just not standing there watching him die and not do anything. You're actually, you're actually working. You're getting blood all over you. You're doing what you can to try to save his life. So sometimes we don't talk about that, but our deputies involved Saturday night did that. Well, sure, that was gonna be my next question is you, you definitely see a lot Well, we have a mental wellness program here. You know, we hired someone now 
um, that's trained in that, and that's her main responsibility is taking care of our deputies. We have a we have 19 deputies going through a week-long class this week called Struggle Well. It's associated with the Big Red Barn. Uh, our goal is to have all of our deputies in the department go through this program. You know, everybody struggles at some point. It's, it's in terms of how do you struggle? Do you struggle well? So we do that. We make it okay to say that you're not okay and you're asked for help. You know, these three that were involved Saturday night, you know, we've got to take care of them. They may not be physically hurt, but, you know, mentally, you know, it's going to get to you. And so we take care of that mental wellness also. So we do a lot with that. That, you know, My main job is to protect them, and that's to make sure that they take care of themselves physically but also mentally too. So Saturday night's one of those nights that we have three that we're going to be taking care of to make sure that they can continue in this profession and that you know, it's not going to hurt them and destroy them. All right, thank you all.